Hey guys, welcome back to the REI Network podcast. I'm actually back in my home office if you're watching me on YouTube, okay, or you may be listening on the podcast, but I'm home. Uh, we've just been on, been away for about four or five weeks in Michigan. Uh, we went into uh, to the lake house, family lake house. We, we can pull the RV just alongside the lake house. Uh, we stayed there for about three three and a half weeks and then we went up to the up which is the upper peninsula i thought that was uh everyone knew that but apparently not that's actually uh you know the, the michigan language there uh but yeah another beautiful place we did that came back just arrived back home a couple of days ago and then we are heading over or down to florida for a week um on tuesday so a lot going on a lot of travel um that's why I, I love what i do and uh to be able to you know make money in real estate um and that's what this this show is all about is trying to educate you teach you give you some action steps for you to take away and actually implement all right so again please reach out if you want to send me an email at support at reinetwork.com if you have anyone that you want me to interview if you want me to talk on any topics teach on anything happy to do so so anything that you want or you'd like to hear uh, please reach out also if you're interested in working with me on a on a coaching level also reach out as well if you go to reinetwork.com join or if you want to work with me one-to-one -one, you can also email in all right awesome so let's get into what i want to talk about today okay which is about closing more deals by making more offers or having more options OK, um, really, really important. And there's so many people that get into real estate and they want to do creative finance. Right. You hear that term or you want you hear about lease option, lease purchase or subject to um, or cash deals. And obviously, I think it's easy to say, like, uh, well, I want to work uh, on creative deals because I want passive income. I want to control property without owning it. And I want a rental coming in. And, and everyone's got all these different visions. But you have to pick where you want to learn. And you need to understand not only where you want to learn and focus if you're new, but how are you going to position these different offers to actually make sense and actually work and get contracts? OK, so. If you're new watching this, I want you to start with one strategy at a time, right? Now, I like obviously wholesaling, starting with cash deals and then going into owner finance, especially if you're brand new to, to real estate. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do lease options or owner finance if you are brand new. I'm not saying that, but I think it's an easier way to break in to keep it simple because on the creative side, you need to be more creative. You need to understand how to learn how to position your offers, position in the sales cycle and um, I'm going to get into that and give you some examples and that can be a little different there's more moving parts in a creative deal and also the word creative is because you can do it a hundred probably a thousand different ways to make a deal work and the idea is is that you're solving problems okay and you're making and creating a win-win situation for both parties or everyone involved OK, so let's run through a scenario of how we can make do more deals, close more deals by making more offers. Now, again, there's two ways to do this. Uh, and You've probably heard this from me before. If this is a cold lead, someone that's not really interested in anything, they're just like, whatever you you reached out, just make me an offer. You could put multiple offers on a page. You can pair offers up, meaning you can make a cash offer with a lease option, maybe a sandwich lease option, staying in the middle of the deal. OK, and, and on a sandwich lease option, that's where you're going to make money on the front. You're going to cash flow and you're going to make you're going to have equity on the back end when you sell it, when you stay in the middle. So you might want to put that offer together. And then a third or fourth offer could be an assignment lease option or maybe an owner finance. Uh, or something like that. So you can start to, you know, put offers together on the same piece of paper. Now, obviously, I just said that to a non motivated seller. These are all talking points, guys. So don't think you're going to make this offer and all of a sudden, what if they accept it? Right. You're talking to a non motivated seller. You're putting things on paper for your follow up, your your position, everything you do in your business is leaning towards the follow up. Um, as you go down the pipeline, as the lead gets older, right? The older the lead, the better the lead. Uh, if you're following up, you're waiting for situations to change, and then you'll be able to lock up a potential creative finance deal over a period of time by solving 
uh, the seller's problem. All right. So let's say that I get on. Maybe I've done a cold call, a text, a direct mail, a PPC, a Facebook. doesn't matter. I get on with a seller and we're having a, a conversation. And um, I understand that this gentleman has got a rental property and it is now vacant and he just wants to get rid of it, but he doesn't want to give it away. Okay, so that's kind of what he's saying up front. So I've got this vacant house of a property, uh, tenants just left. I don't want to be a landlord anymore. I just want to I just want to get rid of it, but I'm not giving it away. Right? That's what he says. So now we've got to put push on them four pillars in that sales cycle. And, and you can change the order of these, but um, you want to find obviously what the situation and motivation, what's going on. Right. So we're going to aim questions around what's going on. We also want to aim questions regarding the. So number one is the, the situation motivation. Right. And then these can go in different orders depending on uh, the, the situation that you're in. Uh, also, the uh, the condition of the property. How much work? What does it need? As it when was the last time you have all the big items, the roof, last updated the kitchen and bathrooms, the AC unit, things like that. OK, you're going to get the condition of the home and, and make sure you're making notes on that. Then you are gonna get a timeline. How quickly do they want something to happen? OK, so I'm going to aim questions around that. And then lastly, obviously, the big one, which is the price. Now, what you're doing and when you get this information is you're going to have to then play with this information and going, is it time? Is it speed? Obviously, the faster, the, the less you're going to offer. The longer, the, the, if, if they have time, they're not in a rush, you could get them more money, right? So these are the things that I'd be thinking as I gather this information. So this guy's already told us that he just wants to get rid of it, okay? He's a, he's a tired landlord, but he doesn't want to give it away. So I'm now going to aim, again, questions in them four pillars to get more information. So let's say, this house uh, rents for a thousand a month, and he wants a hundred and forty thousand. And I'm probably going to make a cash offer of sixty thousand. Okay, so we might be way off right now, right? Um, and but this is the situation. What do you? Oh, I think I want one hundred and forty thousand. So we start getting the condition and going through, and uh, and and obviously I gather my information. I go away. If you're new and you come back and present the offer now in the positioning of this, because there is motivation there, but he wants a high, a high price. This is actually typical. This is this is always going to happen. Right. Well, they're showing motivation, but the price is really high. Yeah. He's a he's an ex investor, probably. Right. With he's had a rental. So he's done some investing. He's been a landlord. So he's probably just testing the water. He just wants to try and get a high price to see if we buy. No problem. But we want to focus on really what the more the core problem is. So is your building rapport, finding more about him, what is his interest, you know, things like that. You're finding out what really is the problem because the money is one thing. But that, we got to get to that core, that core thing that's going on. And he gave us an inkling that he doesn't what he wants to be done. But why does he want to be done? So I'd be saying things to him. Well, why don't you just, you know, put. Uh, you know, maybe five, ten thousand in and then put another renter in. Why don't you do that, Mr. Oh, because of this, 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 this is why I don't. I'm older. I want to what whatever that situation is coming back at. I'm gonna recycle this information and use not back against him, but I'm gonna be reiterating it back to him as we as we go through this. Okay. So we're asking questions about the four pillars. We get back on the phone. We have an offer, and I want to offer him at sixty thousand. He wanted one forty. Now, this is going to be a difficult conversation. Okay, you're probably thinking he's never going to take it, and he probably isn't, or he might not. But again, let's not assume. Let's go into the conversation. So, what I would do in this, let's say his name is David. Hey, David, how you doing? It's Gavin. We, we talked yesterday, or we talked earlier today. I've run the numbers, and uh, you know, you wanted one forty. Um, and I know you want to sell this thing and you want to be done with it, but I just, I'm going to be honest. I just can't get anywhere near 140. It's just, it's just not going to work. And then silence. I want a reaction. What's he going to say? Just think about if I said that to you, what are you going to say? Well, what, it, what will you pay? No, no, it's going to be way less than what you want. It's, it's just not going to work. Um, so I think we're done, but I didn't want to just not call you back. I just wanted to, you know, let you know that my offer is going to be a lot lower and I just can't make this work for you. Again, silence. Now, 
if it, if you like me, there's no way if that was me, I'd be letting you off that phone without knowing what that number was. So what I've done in this scenario is I've actually positioned that it's low and it is going to be lower and it's not going to work. And I've said all of these things because I'm prepping him for me giving him the price. So when he says, um, no, well, you know, just tell me, I understand, I know it needs work and but I've got to get rid of this thing. What will you pay? And I'll say, well, look, you know, like I said, it's low. I'm going to be around that, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollar mark for the money that needs to go in and the condition. That that's kind of where I'm gonna I'm gonna be at, uh, Dave. And he might say he's gonna he's gonna, could react in multiple ways. Wow, really that low? It could be a calm. It could be that's ridiculous. That's a joke. And if you get that, you immediately immediately interrupt him. And say, hold on, Dave, I told you it was going to be low. That's why I didn't even want to give you the offer because you've already positioned. Then it will calm him down again to say, oh, OK, no, I understand. I just can't believe it. You know, I need more than that. So then my next move is very, very simple. I say, Dave, OK, no, I understand. How close are we? How close can you get to my number? Now I want to see how how much he's going to how much he's going to drop. He might say, I'm not taking any less than 100,000. Okay. So straight away, I've dropped 40 grand. So here we go. We're moving. So he's like, I'm not taking any less than 100,000. Okay. So now I have a new benchmark. I want to explain. I didn't go into creative finance yet because I positioned ahead of it. How close are we? What would you come down to? I needed a big jump before I go into creative finance, okay? Because watch what's going to happen next. So he says, I'm not taking any less than 100 grand. So we just lowered $40,000, okay, in this negotiation. And I still can't make it work, right? I needed it at 60,000. I'm going to wholesale it for 70 to a cash buyer. And that's all I've got. That's, that's all the tools I have right now. So that's when then I'm going to now position the creative finance. Now, Again, if you're new, you can position this, get off the phone, give yourself time to prepare and get back on the phone, right? So your next move is we've positioned the price. He's gone low. He's now counted. I've said, how close can we get? How close are we? How close can you come to my offer? He drops to 100 and says, I'm not going any lower than that. Now we lost, we lost 40. That's where we're at. So then I say, okay, Dave, look, well, look, I understand you want 100,000. Um, but I, I just I just can't make it work. But let me ask you this. If we did something on terms, OK, if we did some kind of terms and made some payments to you, something like that, and we could get you closer to 100,000, what would you think? What would you think about that? Now, that is my initial into creative. I never said lease option, lease purchase, create finance, sub two. I just said terms if we were did some kind of terms very general made some kind of payments to you monthly payments and uh and 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 we we could get closer to your price what would you think about then now he's going to potentially say no and i can dig a little further well you know why i go back to the why again if he says no at that point no i don't want to do that well why well i just want to get rid of it well, let me ask you this, Dave, if I could control the property so you haven't got to deal with it and we did it on, like I said, some kind of terms where I can control it all. You haven't got a headache and I'm just paying you a check every month. And then we get you, you know, some kind of other payment down the line. I need to look at the numbers, Dave. But I'm just saying, you know, if we did something like that, because remember, his why was he doesn't want to deal with it. So if I take control and I deal with everything and get him some money to get him to his amount, what do you think about that, Dave? Now he might say, mm, well, yeah, maybe. I mean, what are you thinking? How much? How does this work? Now, if you're newer, again, this is where you can go, well, look, I can't I, I can't just, you know, I I, I was I not looked at numbers for, for something like that. Let me get off the phone. Let me run some numbers and I'll get back on the phone. How about we talk again tomorrow or next time? Now, this gives you now time to come and prep your offer in terms of, how how are you going to do it now are you going to and we understand in this that he doesn't want um he doesn't want a cash offer that low 
He wants to sell it and he doesn't want to deal with it. So we've got to be careful now with the offers that we're making to make sure that we stay on track to still solve his problem. So obviously a, an, a, an assignment lease option is not solving the problem because he still has to deal with it. So we're looking at a sandwich lease option, a sub two, if he has a mortgage or uh, a creative finance. Now, let's just say this is free and clear, right? Uh, obviously, based on this uh, situation. Uh, and again, you can you can play your own there. Oh, he has 40,000 left. And that's where you might use a sub two or an owner finance. Again, depending on what you know and how creative you can get. But when you start to learn these strategies, this is how you need to implement them in the sales cycle because everything that we do is about positioning all right so if there's one thing i want you to take from this call and, and we're going to keep going here but the four pillars okay understanding the situation getting the gathering the information and no one closes on the first phone call do not listen to that okay i've probably closed two deals ever in the in the uh, in the first phone call and that was years ago. Right now, real estate's hot. It's about real building relationships. And you've got to set up for multiple calls. So do not take no for an answer on the first phone call. Just like when, when we just did that role play and we said, um, we offered the 60,000, 100 and said, um, well, would you do any terms? And he said, no. A lot of you would just go, oh, okay, no worries. Well, we can't help you then, Dave. I want to know why he said no. That is the difference between a closer and someone that's just going to give in is because he's saying no, no to what? No to terms. Why? Because I don't want to deal with a property. Well, I can still do terms and I can deal with a property. You see what I'm saying? So you've got to go that extra, uh, extra step to get that. So anyway, so he's now intrigued a little more. We're still not anywhere near a deal. I'm going to get off. I'm going to come back. I'm going to present the 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 options now let's say again we said this was free and clear so maybe i am gonna offer an owner finance okay now also in the positioning in the sales cycle you can actually over talk over explain and actually make the deal fail because you can't stop talking so what do i mean by that i mean using terms of money down how much, Mr. Seller, do you want down? What interest rate will you give me? Um, all of these things. Oh, do you, will you give it three years and then a boom payment, right? All of these things that, that, that you're coming out with, he's not even asked you. So why are you coming out with them things? Because guess what? Oh, yeah, I do want a down payment. I thought about that. Actually, I do want an interest rate. I've not thought about that either. So you're now creating, your deal is getting worse because the questions that you're asking, okay? Now, you're not hiding anything. I'm not asking you to lie, but I'm asking you to not come up with things that's going to help hurt you in the negotiation, okay? So when I get back on with, with Dave, I'm going to say, all right, Dave, well, look, I've looked at the numbers. I want to take control of, you know, of this property. Uh, and uh, what if we did kind of some owner financing? OK, and I can give you, um, let's say, and I'm going to go in with with the, the best terms for me for the negotiation to see how he reacts. OK, I might say, what if I paid you like five, five hundred bucks? Um for the next, you know, until the uh, and, and, until I paid it off. Now it's a hundred grand. He's probably not going to go with that. So maybe I'm going to say I'm going to pay you five hundred bucks uh, for the next um, fifteen years, and then and then I'll I'll do a bloom payment after fifteen years and pay, and then the remaining balance I'll pay off in full. How does that How does that work? So I've not asked for money down. I've not mentioned interest rates. I did a bloom payment because I'm not going to say I'll pay 500 a month uh, if he's an older guy for, for 100 grand because that's going to take like however many years that is. Um, maybe it ain't that many. Maybe I should have looked up and calculated. Let's see. 200 by 100. So that's 200 payments. 12 that's like 16 years so i could have done so maybe let's jump back maybe i say hey i'll pay 500 dollars until i pay the house off i'll take control then your cash flow and you're gonna have less taxes things like that oh no I'm not, i don't want to do that no i'm not i, I want to you know i don't mind doing some terms but 
uh, I'm not doing it for, for that long. Okay, well, how long are you thinking? And then the negotiation starts. Again, still no down payment, still no interest, okay, or, or whatever, right? And this could be a lease option. I'm just giving you examples here of, how, of the things that you need to think about when you're going into these negotiations to actually close more deals. So I might be leaning on this to a 10-year with a balloon payment, maybe going up to 600 bucks a month, maybe giving a bit down, maybe giving a bit of interest if I need to as this negotiation goes on. To, but again, the whole goal is, am I solving his problem? His problem right now is he doesn't want to deal with a property and he wants 100 grand. So I can give you, Dave, 100 grand. I'm going to pay you $500 a month. And in 10 years, what the remaining balance is, I'm going to pay off in full. How does that sound? And that would be now my new offer. And then we would tweak and shape the changes and the objections to, well, what if this and what if that and what if the other, what if the tenants mess it up? Well, I'll pay for that. I'll fix it up. All you need to know, David, is that you're acting as the bank pretty much. You're just holding this. Okay, you're acting as the bank and I'm going to make payments on it. And again, we could have done a sandwich lease option, right, where you stay in the middle of the deal um and, and got him paid out over three years if you wanted or seven or or whatever but what you're seeing in this is the actual position and an understanding how you can actually use your offers okay by this scenario of the position in not over talking to actually get deals done and remember especially on creative and on cash you're going to do more, more than one phone call. You're going to do it over a pipeline, a period of time. We have creative deals right now that we've been talking with people for eight, nine weeks, just recent ones. And we'll still lock things up from months and months ago. And that's the same with cash. On average, our cash deals are probably three to four months on average of close. So I'm not saying we don't get one in the first week. I'm not saying that, but I'm talking about your whole business. The likelihood is, is that you're not going to be doing five deals a month every single month from brand new marketing from one or two conversations. It's just not going to happen. Not in today's market or markets. And I don't care where you're at. It's just not unless you're pumping out a lot of marketing. And if you say to me, Gavin, I actually do five deals a month from new marketing, I'll say, well, you need to be doing, you should be doing 20 deals a month then, okay, from follow up, because you'll always do more deals from follow up than you will on the initial leads. Um, that's why prepping the whole system, the pipeline, everything is so, so important to get this down, okay. But Hopefully um, this this helps. OK, so remember, no over talking. Don't bring up, especially with your lease options, your creative funds, the money, the uh, um, your your interests and your money down. And you are just asking for, for a harder time. Deal with it when it comes up. I've just had a client, Terry, um, we were talking to. He's just got uh, a hundred, uh, basically principal only zero percent interest until it's paid off like an amazing deal cash flowing like i think 600 a month or something uh just a, a crazy great deal but just solving the, the the seller's problem he just didn't want to pay all the taxes so they wanted to do it you know over a period of time and solve the problem with the seller the seller was happy he's happy everyone's happy and it works and that's what you've know, got to understand right the, the sales cycle is not persuasion it is to some degree it is you're persuading but it's also your position and, and allowing them to understand why they're making the decisions they're making because guess what 90% of your sellers guys when they say no they're saying no because they don't know what they're doing they don't know what 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 they're saying no to and test it when they go down what I'll give you a quick I wanna, I wanna, I'll end this I don't want to go too long but let's say in a lease option when someone says to me let's say it's a, a um this 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 leads a sell by owner, right? I call, it's price negotiable, blah blah. No, would you be interested in renting it? Um, yeah, possibly. Um, or I say, what are you going to do if it doesn't sell? I'll rent it, right? Well, you'll do a lease option in my mind now, right? I'm very confident in that. If I get you're trying to sell it, if it doesn't sell, you want to rent it. Why wouldn't you do a lease option? So, and then when I position that lease option, and they're going to go, no, I don't want to do that. Well, I thought you wanted to rent it. Well, yeah, I do. So are they saying no because they don't understand what the, the, the lease option is? Okay. And I don't even use a lot of the time the word lease option. I will say, you know, what if I paid you rent 
and then bought it for X. I don't use the word lease option. What is that? Or lease purchase, right? I try and keep it, I dumb it down so I can have an, a conversation to the to the mass, to the mass public of about like everyone understands I'm gonna make payments of this and I'm gonna have a an option to buy for that. I don't need to say it's a lease option. I just keep it simple, right? Um, in that. So anyway, hopefully this helps. I appreciate it. Good episode today. Hopefully you got some takeaways. Remember, like and subscribe if you can. Make sure you go to REI Network um, podcast, REI Network with Gavin Timms. Give me a review if you can. Make sure you uh, make sure you subscribe also on my YouTube channel as well. Drop me a like if you got something from this. If you're interested in working with me, you can reach out to support RI Network or go to rinetwork.com slash join. One-to-one, um, -one, though, if you want to do that, hit me up on, on my email. We'll have a conversation. If not, stay tuned for the next video, for the next guest. We're going to keep go, uh, keep you know bringing, bringing value. We have Coffee with Closers live every Wednesday as well, so you should check us out on that. That's a lot of fun, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. All right, guys, thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.